uh, MPPN started in 2013, and it has three objectives. One is to support the interchange of national uh, MPIs. A second is to engage in the process of developing sustainable development goals, both in the definition of their goals and in their use as active tools for policy. Um, and the third is to have joint research and, and activities. So what I would like to do is first give um, a bit of an overview of the agenda that we will cover in the next couple of days. Um, and second, um, go through the methodology, and I'm delighted that James Foster is present here, who is a, a motor between, before, behind all poverty measurement, including this multidimensional poverty measure. And then speak a little bit about what has happened since some of us, some of us united uh, last July. I begin with a quote from Amartya Sen, because he always reminds us that measurement has a social purpose, and it is, in a sense, to look at deprivations of many people who lead unnecessarily deprived and precarious lives and focus our attention on their behalf and so that we can uh, align the policies and measurements with their realities and overcome these deprivations. So what we will do at 10 o'clock is have a session of cameos. Um, many of you are presenting within seven minutes. It's so difficult to present within seven minutes but to give an overview to your colleagues of the different activities that have occurred, the way the measures are structured, how they are used. In some, they are very well developed. In some, they are really in the design stage. That is chaired by James Foster. Then we are honored and humbled to have among us the President of Colombia, Juan Manuel Santos, and he will be giving a keynote address at 11.15 after our coffee. This will be followed by a ministerial roundtable in which Jose Aguilar from uh, Horizonte Positivo will be asking the ministers, four ministers, to clarify to us really how on a day-to-day -day basis in their policies and coordinations they use the MPI in Colombia. After lunch, we are privileged again to have Viniana Elena Chacon from Costa Rica to give us a keynote speech um, uh, and share their experience. In 2.15, we return to the seven-minute cameos because we have so many countries this year that are presenting. And so by the end, by three o'clock, you will be exhausted, but you will have a panorama of activities, of energy, imagination, and creativity from your colleagues. At three o'clock is an important session because now we have to focus our action and figure out what we will do together in the next year. When we gather at this time next year, the Sustainable Development Goals and their indicators will have been announced. And so we need to think of how in the coming year we might engage in that agenda and what we might wish to do, either alone or together. There is a photo at 5.30, so please try not to go before 5.30. And then we are very humbled again to have the BSA treat us to a wonderful dinner in Cartagena on the marina, in a beautiful setting. So I do look forward to seeing you there. Tomorrow we have some more in-depth sessions. So we learn from China, Mexico, Colombia, El Salvador, their participatory process. And then we have a few more presentations. Um, Pali Lahoda uh, from South Africa has had a plane delay, so we'll be here tomorrow as will Jose Molinas from Paraguay. So they will give their presentations tomorrow. And we're delighted that we will have two keynotes, one from Antonio Prado in ECLA, and the other from Heike Kuhn in Germany, the BMZ. So we're very grateful to them for their, their leadership. And then in the afternoon, we break into two sessions, one with countries that will focus on MPPN, how we can organize ourselves to have strong activities in the coming year and the other with agencies, and how, again, their voice and their resources and their networks could support this agenda to overcome poverty um, and to energize and really activate po political leaders in different places to feel that this is a task to which they are committed. And at the end, um, we will ask each of you, we will go around the room again, and ask each team or institution to say a couple words about your commitments and your plans. Um, and so we have a sense, in a sense, of how when we disperse from this room, 
where and how we are going forward. There is an informal dinner on Wednesday night, as many of us are staying. So a couple minutes on methodology. You will hear over the next day many discussion of dimensions, indicators, deprivation cutoffs, and poverty cutoffs. So in three slides, I'm going to define these terms. James Foster would make you understand the matrix. I will use pictures. So first, in terms of dimensions in the global MPI, these are categories like health or education or living standards. In the case of Colombia, it also employment and child and youth conditions. In the case of Mexico, also food security. And then there are indicators, 10 indicators. Um, you are deprived if anyone in your household is malnourished, for example, in the global MPI. I'm putting up the indicators of the global MPI, but what you will see is that every country adapts this methodology to their own context. What is different about the MPI, if people ask you why it is different from a human poverty index or from the early childhood development index, is that it starts with each person. You need data, therefore, from the same survey. But you link and you look at the different deprivations that batter poor people's lives at the same time. And it is this feature which gives the index its particular power because policies, as Tatiana said, have to address the interconnected deprivations at the same time. And a multidimensional poverty measure in this way helps us to do it. So example, Tabitha here is deprived of nutrition and four of the living standard indicators. The heights of the rectangles of each indicator indicate their weight. And in this case, we have equal weights between dimensions and equal weights across the indicators. And for each indicator, we identify if somebody is deprived or not, if somebody is malnourished in your household, if a child has died, if nobody has completed five years of schooling. These are examples of deprivation cutoffs that you will hear about. And the last step is to identify who is poor. As Amartya Sen said in 1976, that is the first step of measuring poverty. Who in this room, who in our society is poor? And we identify using a poverty cutoff that says in what proportion, if you add up the weights of nutrition, lack of sanitation, no clean water, no electricity, no assets of Tabitha, she is deprived in 39% of the indicators. In the global MPI, you have to be deprived in 33% to be identified as poor. So those are the steps of constructing the poverty measures, and you will hear many variations in terms of the indicators and the weights and the cutoffs, but the commonality is this methodology of identification. And lastly, um, you compute the MPI, which is an index, which requires multiplication, the percentage of people who you identify as poor in society, which is the headcount ratio, and you multiply it by A, the intensity, or average share of deprivations poor people experience. Tabitha was deprived in 39%. On average, people in Kenya were deprived in 50%. So she was less poor than most people in her country that year. So that is a brief introduction to the methodology. If you have any questions, um, you are welcome to speak with us. And that is for the global MPI, as I mentioned, which has the advantage, as we'll see in the afternoon, of being able to compare different countries, like the $1.25 a day measure of the World Bank. However, what is really exciting for policy and what we will focus on this morning are national MPIs, which are tailored to carry the voices, the culture, the political priorities, the national development plans, the laws, the participatory exercises of each country. And that's what we are going to focus on until 3 p.m. today, is how are different countries creating national measures, like national income poverty measures, that cannot be compared across countries, but that do very much drive policy. I will not go into how to use an MPI, because uh, you will see many examples. But there is a headline, there are subnational decompositions, 
you decompose by indicator and you can break it down by indicator and by region. And for example, in the case of Europe, by gender. Um, so there are many ways of pulling apart the MPI that you will experience, and you already have experienced, those of you who went on the DPSA field trip yesterday. We will also hear tomorrow about, from Dane, about how to communicate the MPI to the press, as well as to policy actors and the public. public. Um, and also in some of the case studies, how to involve the private sector or youth or how the measures provide political incentives. And these are important because one task is analyzing poverty, but the next is bringing it into the human fabric that actually confronts poverty and figuring out how the human beings in these different institutions can do their jobs better by using this analysis. So in closing, let me simply say what we have done in the last year. From our 2013 launch, in Oxford with Professor Amartya Sen among us and 22 countries as members. We grew last year in Berlin when we had over 30 members and now we have uh, 40 members, uh, member countries plus 10 international institutions. Last year we set up one working group to hold a side event at the UN General Assembly. In 2013 we held a side event in a room that held 100. Last year, there were over 300 participants at our side event. It was very popular. Um, we also set up a side a working group to develop light, powerful survey modules, and we issued those modules in November. We also uh, had a side event at the UN Statistics Commission, again, that generated a lot of energy, and Pali Lahola, who will join us, uh, can talk more about that. And then there have been many events, and this is a very incomplete list uh, of some of them. Uh, for example, Chile has been supporting the Eastern Caribbean states to do studies, participatory studies on multidimensional poverty. There was a wonderful workshop um, here in Colombia, uh, again sharing its experience with some Latin American countries. Um, and uh, there are many, many other activities that you will be hearing about, with Conaval engaging in Algeria, for example, and Iran with ECLAC's report that you will hear on the Panorama Social, where they've done a trial regional uh, multidimensional poverty measure that better captures the conditions in Latin America. And uh, Chile was the country to launch its national MPI in February. They just had to cancel participation in their meeting. Um, but it's been a long and very interesting process in Chile, and they now have uh, an official statistic so um, I will close here to turn over to James and in segue to James also to mention that he and others in OPI um, and have authored a book which will be released uh, next week uh, initially on the methodologies that underlie this. But you would go to sleep if we said any more about the book. So instead I'll hand it over to James uh, who will uh, call on the presentations in the seven minute groups. Thank you.